Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to break down top stacks on the board in DFS for the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. What's going on, Jim? Not too much, Greg. I'm pretty excited for this weekend. I think there is a path to all four games being relatively exciting and close. You know, maybe the Browns can't quite keep pace, but I think they'll score some points. So I'm pretty jacked about this weekend. How are you doing? I'm excited as well. I thought you were going to say the Green Bay Los Angeles game was the one that didn't necessarily excite you all that much, but all these other games look really, really good. And you know, the the NFL didn't necessarily get exactly what they were looking for in getting the Chiefs versus the Ravens, Lamar versus Mahomes yet, but that may still be to come. And we'll talk about Patrick Mahomes in just a moment. But let's start with Lamar Jackson. We saw what he could do on that 50-yard run. Uh, in the first half last week, and hopefully we get more of that. And if we don't get that, hopefully we get some touchdown passes to Hollywood Brown. Their chemistry over the last six weeks is evident. And more of that, please. And I think we can finally call him Hollywood again. Like, he re-earned the nickname. <laughs> so congrats to you, Marquise. You're Hollywood one more time. And I think that if you're looking at the Saturday-only slate, this game is the best one by a wide mile. These are the top two quarterbacks in the slate. I prefer Lamar over Josh Allen, but they're both pretty close, and they're both really good. The reason I want to go Lamar is he's lower salary. He's $8,000 for this slate, which is outrageously low, considering how much he is running. He's averaging 12 rushes per game and 94.3 yards per game since he came off the COVID-19 list. That is absurd rushing production for a quarterback, and the passing has been efficient, too. Now, they're facing a top half pass defense the first time since week 10. So it's a tougher matchup than what Lamar Jackson has had in that time. But I think with the rushing, the floor is so high and the production has been so good that I'm not even sure a tougher matchup will matter with how well they are playing. As far as Marquise Brown goes, we saw the upside last week where he finally got that meaty role I've been hoping for the entire season. You know, finally was there, got a lot of volume, was good in that volume as well. I think there is a very good argument to be made that Mark Andrews should be the stack here because he's $6,600. Tight end is not great for sure. So I think that Andrews definitely does work too. Probably the tight end on the slate, but Mark, Marquise Brown, $6,500. He's under salaried. He has obvious yardage upside. He's been scoring a ton of touchdowns recently. So you kind of can't go wrong. It's kind of the same thought process as with Lamar and Josh Allen, where you kind of can't go wrong. Just pick your favorite. For me, I have Marquise Brown a tiny bit ahead of Mark Andrews, but I'm going to use a lot of both on Saturday because they are both top tier plays at their position. This game is by far the best on the slate. So I think you just kind of build around this game, whichever way you want to. For me, that starts with Lamar Jackson. It starts with Marquise Brown at wide receiver, running back with Stephon Diggs and maybe Devin Singletary and should be in a pretty good spot. Uh, for some good production in the Saturday night game. Lamar Jackson versus Josh Allen is going to be absolutely awesome. You want to stack Stephon Diggs with with, uh, with Josh Allen. I don't think anyone's going to tell you not to. But Lamar Jackson and, and that rushing upside is just so evident, as we saw last week. Pairing him with Marquise Brown or Mark Andrews, uh, I think those work as well. It's going to be a fun one on Saturday night, uh, and I'm excited to stack that game for sure on FanDuel. I mentioned Patrick Mahomes earlier. He makes his 2021 playoff debut this weekend as uh, the Kansas City Chiefs take on those Browns. The the spread is is obviously much greater than in that Ravens-Bills game we just discussed. And you're pairing up Mahomes with Tyreek Hill here rather than Travis Kelsey. Any reason why? It's all about upside because I think on this slate, there's going to be a lot of points because, you know, you have this game between the Browns and the Chiefs. The Chiefs offense will do well here. And I think the Browns offense will do well, too. So you need raw upside. Travis Kelsey is phenomenal. I think you can pair Mahomes with Hill and Kelsey. That's totally fine. But if I had to pick one, I go Tyree Kill because I think that the ceiling on him is a lot better. No, well, maybe not a lot better, but it's better than Travis Kelsey. The reason here is Sammy Watkins is still banged up. Watkins did not practice on Wednesday. In the five games they played with no Sammy Watkins this year, Tyree Kill had 28% of the Chiefs' total targets. He had 37% of the deep targets and 36% in the red zone. Now, Travis Kelsey also did get a high leverage bump in the games with no Sammy Watkins, so he would benefit too if Watkins can't go but Tyree Kill man we saw that game against Tampa Bay that game happened when Sammy Watkins was sidelined so or I guess the first Sammy Watkins first game back so regardless we're gonna see a lot of volume for Tyree Kill we're gonna see probably like 10 targets or so and 10 targets to Tyree Kill from Patrick Mahomes against this defense 
that's pretty hard for me to turn down. So honestly, you can't go wrong between Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. If you look at Kelsey's game logs, like, it's absurd the levels of consistency he has had this year. He, I, I, Brandon Gadula, my co-host over at Number Fire, said that he has a 75% chance to be the highest scoring tight end in the slate. So you want t- Travis Kelsey too, but Tyreek Hill is the guy who can burn you for not using him on the slate. He can pop a 50 burger with little effort. So I'm going to go with Travis or Tyreek Hill over Travis Kelsey by a slim margin. But honestly, Greg, it's worthwhile to try to jam in both. A 75% chance of Travis Kelsey being the top tight end on the slate, according to Brandon Gadula. That's actually crazy. But the upside with Tyreek Hill is just a smidge higher, only because we saw him score like 50 fantasy points in a game a couple of weeks back. Patrick Mahomes, obviously in line to to really go off. You can't go wrong with Patrick Mahomes, or or really almost all of these quarterbacks on the slate. You cannot go wrong with maybe outside of Baker Mayfield. But Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, it's going to be a fun one for the Chiefs on Sunday. One final game to get to, and that's the Saints and the Buccaneers. We've seen it on the History Channel, right? The battle of these old quarterbacks of Brady and Brees. You're going with Tom Brady, or or, sorry, you're going with Drew Brees, rather, uh, stacking him alongside Alvin Kamara in this matchup. Why, I I mean, in all honesty, why Brees over Brady? I know this one is tough. I know both defenses aren't bad. Why Brees over Brady? And then, of course, the stack with Kamara makes sense. But, But why go with Brees? I do think that Tom Brady's a very good play, so I'm not going to down talk him. But I think that with Breeze, there is unseen upside in what he's been doing, specifically because he's been playing better than perception since he came back from that rib injury. It's now a four game sample on Drew Breeze since returning. He's averaging 0.28, passing that expected points per drop back in that time. The league average is 0.13, and 0.28 is a really good number. So he's been efficient. He's also been throwing a bit further downfield. That was a big knock on Breeze before. It's still a big knock because his average depth of target is still just 6.9 yards downfield. But that's a yard and a half deeper than what it was before he got hurt. So he's throwing the ball deeper downfield. He's throwing the ball efficiently. And I think he can do pretty well against this Tampa Bay secondary because that offensive line should be able to neutralize the aggressive nature of the Buccaneers defensive line. So Drew Brees, since coming back, he has not had more. I don't think he's had 21 FanDuel points in any of those four games. So if you look at the game logs, you're going to cross Drew Brees off and just focus on Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. And I think that's justifiable for sure. But I do want to mention that there is additional upside in Drew Brees and maybe we have not seen yet. I could very well see Drew Brees dropping a four touchdown game on Sunday. Taysom Hill, not at full health, did not practice on Wednesday. They may not be able to use him in his usual role. That'd be a plus thing for Drew Brees as he would lose those high or he wouldn't be losing those high leverage touches if Hill can't go. But even if Hill does go, I think that there is some untapped upside in Drew Brees. The other note from the injury report on Wednesday is that Latavius Murray did not play. Alvin Kamara is a rock star play, whether Murray plays or not. But if he can't go, does Alvin Kamara leave the field? Probably not. In his two games against Tampa Bay, yes, they had a tough matchup, but he had seven targets per game in those two games. He had 21 fan duel points back in week one, despite having just 16 rushing yards. It doesn't matter about the rushing matchup for Kamara. It's all about the way he is used. He gets targets. He's efficient in those targets. He's, he can score points. So I think that both Breeze and Kamara are benefiting from the way the injuries have broken for this team, specifically with Hill and Murray being banged up. Even if those guys play, I think that it's a good spot for Breeze and Kamara. So straight up, I'd rank Tom Brady above Drew Brees, but I don't think anybody's going to use Drew Brees on Sunday, so you'll be a bit sneaky here. I think there's untapped upside, and I think, you know, there's a chance that Drew Brees has his best game since returning on Sunday. All those factors align to make me okay with a Drew Brees stack, and I think it makes sense to pair him with Alvin Kamara here, although Michael Thomas is also under salary. Michael Thomas is just underappreciated, man. And I I like Michael Thomas a lot this weekend, as I did last week. Uh, But Drew Brees is the sneaky play. And and you're absolutely right. You look at these roster of quarterbacks that you can choose, and Drew Brees isn't going to potentially be the first or second one that you'd want to go with. But it's sneaky, and he has the upside in a tournament. It makes sense. Alvin Kamara, obviously, we've seen what he can do. We see the points that he can put up. He's always a rock star. And Latavius Murray is even just a little bit banged up, and that results in a few extra snaps for Alvin Kamara. Well, we'll certainly take it here this weekend. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up Jim, We appreciate the time. Good luck. I appreciate it, Greg. Good luck to you as well. Looking forward to breaking down the conference champion slate with you next week.
Only one more two-game slate to go before the Super Bowl. It will be fun next week. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Join us tomorrow when Tom Becchio will join us as we go over the top plays in the NBA on Friday night. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.